to make sure we get started as close to time as possible. I know that everyone is so excited to see each other in person, and it is so good to see you all in person. Thank you. Now I'll go sit back down, right? Where's my hand? Where's the, do I just start? I guess I start, sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, good morning and welcome. I just have to say again how good it is to see you all in person. I know this isn't the same thing, but it's a sight better than last year, right? And we have your families and your friends and your colleagues watching us during this ceremony. So also I say hello to all of them. What a proud day for you, graduates and your families, spouses, children, and friends watching from afar. I welcome you to this wonderful occasion when we will be celebrating the individual and collective accomplishments of the graduates from Duke University School of Nursing. Additionally, in these first few rows, I want to recognize all of our faculty, our clinical nurse educators, and clinical instructors who are with us today. It has been quite a year. The contributions of these individuals have helped today's graduates achieve their professional goals. The first and foremost, to graduate. I would also like to thank the staff and student services for coordinating this amazing event. This is, for sure, we hope the only one like this, but it's definitely the first that we've had. Before we begin today's ceremony, I would like to offer welcome to Dr. Connie Bishop, who's seated here on this. You can find her by her mask. It's a very cool mask. Dr. Bishop is a visiting professor at Chamber Un Chamberlain University College of Nursing in the Masters, teaches part-time online. She's also a retired clinical associate professor at NC a and University School of Nursing, which she taught for, at for years. Dr. Bishop serves as an emeritus member of our Nursing Alumni Council, so she is an alum, and is actively involved with the school's racial justice task forces. Thank you for being here to help us celebrate, Connie. It is now my privilege to introduce Zui Tan Go, who has been selected on to speak on behalf of all graduating students. Zui Tan Go is a May 21 graduate of our ABSN program. Thank you, Dean, for the wonderful introduction. Welcome, graduates, friends, and families. We are honored that you are here in person or virtually to celebrate this important day. Thank you, Dean Broom, members of the faculty, mentors, preceptors, clinical instructors, administrators, alumna, organizational sponsors, and our families for being here at our finish line. For 90 years, the Duke University School of Nursing has pushed forth the frontiers of health and healing, education, and research in the past 90 years, our institution has advanced our nation's capability for treating diseases and improving the lives of those we care for. 90 years of tradition, creativity, and defending public health. Today, we continue this legacy as leaders of our communities nation, and world, all driven by a force of good. Today, 
we see the fruits of our labors, the visions of our faculty now realized. And today, we make patients and families the focus of our lives' passions. At this time, let us connect with each other. Be present now at this sacred moment. You are here not by mere interest, but by a special calling. There is something unique in each and every one of you that patients, families, and healthcare need. Together, nurses can overcome the hardships created in our societies. Nurses in unity have the power to change the world as the most trusted profession our voices matter, and the world is listening right now. No matter of who we are, where we came from, or what we believe in, we are all united as nurses. What does this mean? Nursing is synonymous with kindness, service, heroism, compassion, advocate, team member, and thought leader. Nurses are also pivotal in societies across populations from the most affluent to the most vulnerable. Our role stretches beyond the bedside into communities and healthcare systems in the way of collaborators, entrepreneurs, innovators, policy leaders, and researchers. Nurses are inextricably tied to patients, families, and communities. The pandemic set the stage for a period of uncertainty and fear. Yet, our students, whether ABSN, MSN, DNP, or PhD, were anchors in this storm. The ABSN students continue to learn and grow into the next generation of nurses who will carry the torch passed by our profession. The MSN students who return to Duke to expand their nursing careers to become nurse practitioners, educators, leaders, forged ahead with perseverance and determination. The DNP students face unexpected and disruptive conditions that force them to adapt their capstone projects while continuing to provide for the health of their patients and families. The PhD students experience interruption of research resources, but they call upon their creativity to shift their methods of data collection and analysis, all in an effort to evolve nursing science. No matter what, we kept moving forward despite the challenges presented by the pandemic. We are here today because we worked together. We trusted and relied upon one another. We came together with spirits of support, unity, and progress. It is by faith and the desire to make a difference that we have succeeded today. For people watching at home, 
What does D-U-S-O-N stands for? We stand for whatever it takes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our creativity and fresh outlook can bring forth innovation and steer the helm of healthcare into the 21st century, where regardless of our differences, we are measured by the scales of excellence and by the magnitude of our commitment and passion. Speaking of passions, what is passion? What is this zealous spirit that the nursing profession calls forth? Passion is the immovable desire to realize a commitment, a belief, a calling, an idea, or a vision for the common good. Passion requires that you move forward even at times, and especially during times when there are hardships on your path. On bad days, passion feels like a leaf blowing against the wind. On good days, passion lifts you up and lights your heart on fire. Passion is the fuel for leadership and the heart of creativity. Find your passion and strive for leadership and innovation while never forgetting the reason why you became a nurse. I was born in Vietnam in a town called the Hill of Dreams to a banana farmer who often taught me an iron rod with constant grinding can turn into a needle. With much perseverance, I went from the hill of dreams to now mountains of opportunities by becoming a nurse. I would like to share this same spirit and aspirations with you today. Keep on grinding and become that needle. You can make a difference in this world. You can achieve your dreams. And you can be one of the best nurses that ever stepped foot on this earth. So do some class of 2020 and 2021. Sharpen your path to be the nurse leader of your destiny. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. His first degree was in English or poetry or something. That was. I want you to be my speechwriter. You're fantastic. Thank you. No, we have a medal for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got to get to it. Well, you know, I don't need a script for this. Um, I better put this back on, right? Um, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. And y you saw from all the. The, uh, it, it, was, it was very inspirational and very inclusive. I don't think I've ever heard all four programs Thank spoken to before. Thank you very much. So let's put this. Oops. There we go. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You On May 2nd, 
uh, Sunday, but just last Sunday, May 2nd, the Duke University School of Nursing awarded its second honorary doctorate to Dr. Jacqueline Campbell during Duke's commencement exercises. And I will go off script to say, if you haven't watched those on YouTube, um, the, the speech to the graduates by John Legend was fantastic. Jacqueline Campbell, the Anna D. Wolf Chair and professor in the Johns Hopkins University School of Nursing, is a renowned scholar of domestic and intimate partner violence. In her career, Dr. Campbell has authored seven books and more than 300 publications, served as principal investigator for nearly 20 major grants, and has been elected to the National Academy of Medicine and the American Academy of Nursing. Dr. Campbell's path-breaking work on domestic partner homicide and collaboration with survivors of intimate partner violence have greatly improved the Academy's understanding of these pressing problems. And I would also add that really gave the voice and the face of nursing a very different look in the 1980s, what we were really interested in, who we were really interested in caring for and understanding more about. These efforts and her advocacy for victims and survivors of domestic violence have saved or improved the lives of countless people around the world. <clears throat> Dr. Campbell received her BSN from Duke in 1968, and we are proud to call her a Duke alumna. Her son, her daughter, and her son-in-law are also alumni, and her granddaughter, Grace, is a member of the class of Duke 2024. Let's just watch a very short special message for video message from Dr. Campbell. I'm Jackie Campbell. I am a very proud graduate of Duke University School of Nursing class of 1968. And I was very honored this year to receive an honorary doctorate from Duke, the first nurse to get one. And that's thanks in part to your wonderful Dean, uh, Miriam Broom. And uh, I wish all of you the very best in a career. Take Duke nursing and everything you've learned here, go forward, make the world a better place. And her sponsors were Dr. Janice Humphreys and Dr. Rose's Guarda Gonzalez. So let's move on to our current student awards. <clears throat> Each year, the school recognizes students for academic and clinical excellence. Many of the student awards were presented on Wednesday at the annual faculty, staff, and student award ceremony. Another lovely, or as lovely as you can get, virtual ceremony. <laughs> the description of each award is listed in your program. How else, however, I would also like to take this opportunity to again congratulate the students recognized. If I call, for those of you who are here students, as I call your name, please stand. The Anna Beery Bieber Award for Outstanding Leadership, Aurora Floor Gaines. <clears throat> Outstanding DNP Scholarly Project Award, Gibran Majid. I don't believe Gibran's here. The Ruby L. Wilson Excellence in Clinical Practice Award, Abby Lilana Underkoffler. The Thelma Ingalls Award, Lindsay Jackson Lance. The Bonnie Jones Friedman Humanitarian Award, Lee P. L. Chauvel. And last but not least, the Distinguished Dissertation Award, Yu Fin Lin. Oh. Congratulations again to each of you. Now we are moving to, into the presentation of graduates. I invite Dr. Valerie Howard, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, to come and recognize the students earning their Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Nursing Practice, Master of Science in Nursing, 
certificate awardees, and accelerated Bachelor of Science in Nursing degrees. Thank you, Dean Broom. It is my pleasure to present the Duke School of Nursing graduates for the PhD degree. PhD graduates are prepared as nurse scientists to develop new knowledge that will improve the health of individuals, caregiving systems, and communities. The PhD graduates will come forward and be hooded today with assistance from Dr. Sharon Dougherty, Assistant Dean of the PhD program, and their dissertation chair. Please hold your applause until all PhD graduates have been recognized. Yufen Lin. Congratulations, Dr. Lin. Robin Catherine Wojak. Congratulations, Dr. Wojak. Jacqueline Nick Poor. Congratulations, Dr. Nick Poor. Michelle Scotton Franklin. Congratulations, Dr. Franklin. Kristen Joanne Maisel Wainwright. Congratulations, Dr. Wainwright. Maureen Siebert Gators. Congratulations, Dr. Gators. Lisa Mansfield. Congratulations, Dr. Mansfield. Jewel Lynette Scott. Congratulations, Dr. Scott. Yes, all Yang.
congratulations, Dr. Yang. Nicole Dominique Calhoun. Congratulations, Dr. Calhoun. Jacqueline Vaughn. Congratulations, Dr. Vaughn. Matthew LeBlanc. Congratulations, Dr. LeBlanc. That concludes the hooding of our PhD graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to present the graduates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree. These graduates have been prepared to lead in the healthcare system of the future. They will bring solutions to the gaps in healthcare, and they will evaluate current practices looking for opportunities for improvement. Each DMP graduate will come forward and be hooded today with the assistance from Dr. Barbara Turner, Assistant Dean of the DNP program and the Scholarly Project Chair. Please hold your applause until all DNP graduates have been recognized. Heather Barnard. Congratulations, Dr. Barnard. Anna Tomlinson. Congratulations, Dr. Tomlinson. Tracy Vernon Platt. Congratulations, Dr. Vernon Platt. Melissa Andrea Wilson. Congratulations, Dr. Wilson. Bosade or Molola Andedire. Congratulations, Dr. Adedire. Helen Nation.
Congratulations, Dr. Nation. Mary Galinas. Congratulations, Dr. Jelinas. Vicki Losey. Congratulations, Dr. Losey. Amy Elizabeth Samuels. Congratulations, Dr. Samuels. Joseph Toomey III. Congratulations, Dr. Toomey. Cassandra Shoemaker Brino. Congratulations, Dr. Brino. Mariana Da Costa. Congratulations, Dr. DaCosta. Kimberly Wood. Congratulations, Dr. Wood. Michelle Cotti. Congratulations, Dr. Cotti. Kristen Ann Baker. Congratulations, Dr. Baker. Therese Ann Bernstein. Congratulations, Dr. Bernstein. Kate Anderson Bogue. Congratulations, Dr. Bogue. Haley Everhart Coochie. Congratulations, 
Congratulations, Dr. Kuchi. Brandon McCroby. Congratulations, Dr. McCroby. Robin Michael. Congratulations, Dr. Michael. Linda Valani Pham. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Pham. Katie. Pool. Congratulations, Dr. Pool. Lauren Anita Arrington. Congratulations, Dr. Arrington. Haiween Tong Niemzik. Congratulations, Dr. Niemzik. Allison Michaels. Congratulations, Dr. Michaels. Heather Rivasplata. Congratulations, Dr. Rivasplata. Kelly Kester. Congratulations, Dr. Kester. Elizabeth June Squires. Congratulations, Dr. Squires. Jacqueline Naparola Johnson.
Congratulations, Dr. Naparola Johnson. Kendra Manival. Congratulations, Dr. Manival. Judith Weif. Congratulations, Dr. Waif. Alexander Arnaud. Congratulations, Dr. Arnaud. Sarah Brazowski. Congratulations, Dr. Brazowski. Gage Fluelling. Congratulations, Dr. Fluelling. Felicia Hogan. Congratulations, Dr. Hogan. Katie Pierce Peters Sechi. Congratulations, Dr. Sechi. Michaela Joy Siemens. Congratulations, Dr. Siemens. Valerie Engelhart. Congratulations, Dr. Engelhart. Amber Misra. <coughs> Congratulations, Dr. Misra. Tisha St. Rose.
Congratulations, Dr. St. Rose. Paige Catherine Worden Bloom. Congratulations, Dr. Bloom. Laura Hollister Meadows. Congratulations, Dr. Meadows. Susan Ketchings. Congratulations, Dr. Catchings. Tirza Johnson. Congratulations, Dr. Johnson. Gabriella Urbina. Congratulations, Dr. Urbina. Michelle Fry. Congratulations, Dr. Fry. Amber Jane Siegel. Congratulations, Dr. Siegel. Megan Helene Carter. Congratulations, Dr. Carter. Margaret Murphy. Congratulations, Dr. Murphy. Teresa Wood. Congratulations, Dr. Wood. Jill Marie Collins. Congratulations, Dr. Collins. Anjanette Horman.
Congratulations, Dr. Horman. Lauren Carney. Congratulations, Dr. Carney. Kesha Rooks. Congratulations, Dr. Rooks. That concludes the hooding of our DNP graduates. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to present the graduates for the Masters of Science in Nursing and Certificate awardees. These remarkable graduates are prepared to deliver exemplary healthcare as advanced practice nurses, lead teams, innovations, and healthcare systems across the nation and the globe, and serve as role models and educators to nurses, health professionals, and students of the future. Graduates will be greeted by Dr. Ann Derwin, Assistant Dean of the MSN program. Please hold your applause until all MSN graduates and certificate awardees have been recognized. Desta Abati. Claire Akers Turley. Eric Arkiwu. Elizabeth Betsy. Ann Allen. <laughs> Samantha Craven Ammons. Megan Cowan Anderson. Rodney Andrews. Laura Lee Anthony. Catherine Ann Ariona. Jody Lee Bate. Deborah M. Bates. Emily Ann Beck. Ma 
Mackenzie Bettinger. Jill Christine Bloomer. Jemima Boncales. Stephanie Boone. Emily Voucher. Jessica Boutte. Bryn Lou Brendamore. Shannon Brennan. Janice Caceres. Miriam Camacho Stokes. Kimberly Elise Canada. Eugene Chung. Kara Connolly. Rebecca David Heiser. Margarita De La Fuente. Nelby Ann Mondoctran. Jill Engel. Jennifer Rose Farrell. Aaron France. Nicole Frisk. Nicole Gabralt. Lily Margot George. Don Gregory. Leanne Hartman.
Danielle Hayden. Katherine Henderson. Nicole Ray Hess. Kim Hon. Amy Hallner. Katherine Hood Scott. Gina Ianzelli. Lindsay Lance. Jodine Jensen. Lindsay Jones. Malia Kalsbeek. Hannah Elizabeth King. Sarah Kilgore. Julie Malictum. Kayla Long. Anitza Peros Land. Leah Lacu. Crystal Gale Locklear. Abigail Lewis. Caitlin Maley. Michael McLean. Cody Matthews. Catherine Marting. Sarah Martin.
Virginia Martinez Kitchen. Alicia Avila Creeman. Lauren Elizabeth Miles. Allison Cross. Hannah Cordelia Layfield. Alessandra Inez Lopez. Delena Marie Lucas. Sarah Alice Luffman. Jenny Pride. Victoria Osorno. Daniel Moldwin. Annie Umaru. Nikki Wade. Jamie Mancuso. Ava Maritato. Camille Rogashan Lebeau. Christy McMurray. Victoria Christine Menzoni. Emma Michael. Melissa Rutkin. Jason Douglas Roy. Karen Nessner. Adil Musa.
Abigail Ocanti. Maureen Gallagher Stannard. Kate Smith. Melanie Paul Hackett. Candace Stringfield. Natalie Elena Stewart. Glennis Green Thorpe. Angela Tatis. Luciana Svilpa. Megan Walker. Abby Robinson Volk Perez. Crystal Scott. Leah Chauvel. Lauren Starks. Edward Steen. Jason Suarez. Dr. Kelly Sullivan. Terry Sullivan. Emmy Smith. Fatima M. Tran. Mora Eileen Tuffy. Julia Elizabeth Wallace. Callie Walton.
That concludes the recognition of MSN graduates and certificate awardees. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to begin the presentation of graduates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Graduates will be greeted by Dr. Michelle Hartman, Assistant Dean of the ABSN program. As each student's name is read, they will be presented with their Duke University School of Nursing pin. The gold pin serves as a symbolic welcome to the nursing profession and signifies the student's academic program completion achievement. Please hold your applause until all ABSN graduates have been recognized. Samantha Adrian. <laughs> Zoe Tan Go. Betsy Amen. Aaron Britton. Ryan Neil Cage. Sarah Jane Cooper. Julio C. Crass. Megan Elizabeth Cardwell. Shy Day Dean. Kimberly Costin. Renata Daval. Arara Gaines. Kaylee Elise Hancock. Kaylee Hildebrandt. Carrie Isley.
Elizabeth Janes. Brittany King. Olivia Khan Pretchmer. MJ Lee. Cameo Latrice Lewis. Suzanne Gordon. Kara Reagan Griffin. Shannon Nicole Haymond. Angel Henkelman. Olivia Kelly. Gabrielle Kalef. Oliver Fajardo. Anthony Morrow. Brittany Mint. Zori Amber Michelle Moultrie. Leah Shoshana Hager. Liana Sophie Magaliff. Madeline Manfredi.
Sarah Marie Kent. Emily Lazinski. Jordan Alexandria Lunsford. Melissa Lockamy. Stephanie Bell Robinson. Mario Rodarth. Sarah Leach. Awesome. Hannah Elizabeth Abeg Smith. Alyssa Skalitsky. Anna Christian Spivey. Sydney Diane Marion. Virginia Pope. Carolyn Lauren Munoz. Martin Roskowski. Connor Murray. <laughs> Molly Moore Petrie. Holly Porter. <laughs> Alyssa Markovic. Lauren McKinney. A. Sutton. 
Sutherland. Jenna Zabo. Caitlin Sullivan. Elise Staub. Patricia Vieira da Silva. Bryce Traverman. Samantha Wogue. Abby Underkoffler. Stephanie Tucker. Savannah Escobar. Corina Chulada Smith. Allison Wynn. <laughs> Tara Joy Zwart. That concludes the ABSN pinning. Congratulations. I now invite Dean Broom back to the podium along with Dr. Barbara Turner. Dean Broom, if you could stand for a moment and just take a look around at this momentous occasion. Our first time back in 14 months, and this is your final graduation as Dean of the School of Nursing at Duke. And we want to congratulate you at this time. John Quincy Adams said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, or do more, you are a leader. And we want to thank you for leading us through the past 14 months, being a beacon of hope, 
a guiding light during that pandemic. And certainly, thank you for your leadership over the past seven years as the Dean of the School of Nursing. Thank you. cried through this whole thing. <laughs> Thank you. I mean the whole thing. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. Wait till I finish my talk later. <laughs> Woo. Thank you. Um, so um, I would now like to invite um, Connie Bishop, who I introduced earlier as one of our alums and also a member of our uh, Nursing Alumni Council who will bring greetings and remarks from the nursing alumni to all of our new graduates. Thank you, Dean Broom. When I was asked to speak to you today, it presented me with a second opportunity to do so, having done it in 2009 as the NAC president. I am honored to be here representing the Nursing Alumni Council, as well as all of the Doosan alumni who are extraordinarily proud of you. So as I thought about what I should speak on, the image of the Chinese symbol for crisis came to mind. It is mistakenly identified as meaning crisis and the other opportunity, which JFK used in his campaign. It actually means change point. Wei Ji, change point. Or to use another misappropriated Chinese expression, it's good to live in interesting times. So congratulations, guys. Mission accomplished. Here's a brief recap of what you have experienced. Back to academia and all things APA. Syllabi and volumes of reading. Clinicals, Year of the Nurse 2020, and it was so good, we're doing it again in 2021. COVID-19, a global pandemic. Then, Virtual classrooms, Zoom, remote doctoral defenses, virtual health assessments, change points. Doosan responded, as we did in World War II, with the Cadet Nurse Corps. To use the word du jour, we pivoted. Then you gave COVID tests. You did COVID vaccinations. You backfilled at Duke University health system locations including the hospital, going to underserved communities to bring testing, vaccinations, and education. To change a Mel Brooks movie quote, it's good to be resilient. Another change point, Black Lives Matters with global protests. Another change point occurred, the pandemic of health disparities are more accurately described racial health disparities. Nurses knew about it. Healthcare knew about it. But now the public knew about it. Testing clinics set up in communities not at risk. Vaccine sites in locations with no public transportation. You are now on the front lines in a different way. Now you're a hero in an especially important time. You need to make good trouble as John Lewis charged us all. You, we as nurses need to keep this new pandemic in the light. You are Duke nurses and you are well prepared. 
Nurses need to be front and center in this mission. The National Commission to Address Racism in Nursing was created in 2021. Its goal will examine the issue of racism within nursing nationwide and describe the impact on nurses, patients, communities, and healthcare systems to motivate all nurses to confront systematic racism. To quote the ANA, ANA along with nurses everywhere are called again to action. Collectively, we must emerge from our silence and speak with one strong voice as leaders and role models of compassion and empathy for our patients, families, communities, and most importantly, for ourselves. Our voice is our commitment to making a difference in all we do for those we serve. You need to engage in this fight to combat this long-standing pandemic. So what wise counsel can I provide you in these interesting times? I feel I have some to offer after 46 years in the nursing profession and two Duke degrees. My time as a student was vastly different from yours. I used film strips instead of videos. As Winston Churchill said, never waste a good crisis. But that said, how are you? You've proved you're resilient, that you can pivot, that you can retool yourself. But how are you? I ask because nurses are reporting extraordinary levels of burnout, depression, and suicide. Nurses are leaving the profession due to extreme stress. So my best wise counsel is taking care of yourself and your fellow nurses. I'm currently reading Eddie Glaude Jr.'s book, Begin Again, James Baldwin's America, and its urgent lessons for our time. Glaude describes how Baldwin struggled with the aftertimes of the civil rights movements in the 60s and again in the 70s. Baldwin had to leave the U.S to gain perspective. He called it his elsewhere, a safe place where he could gain perspective, think, regenerate, and rejoin the fight again. Find your elsewhere. Now I'll give you the traditional graduation chart. Wallow in your resiliency. You thrive during multiple change points. Do not stop learning, it's continuous. But read something in the next 30 to 45 days that is not on a syllabus. Claim your power as a nurse. 19 years is the most trusted profession. Leverage it. I want to recognize and congratulate you on your extraordinary academic achievement. And I want to also welcome you into a new chapter of your life as a proud Duke alumni. It is my hope that your connection to Duke and School of Nursing is a lifelong relationship, and the memories you have as students will only be enhanced with the memories as an alum. I just celebrated my 46th reunion several weeks ago. My memories are capping, pinning, and candlelights in Haynes Annex, and lifelong friendships to this day. Yours are living through change points. I encourage you to stay in touch with the school by attending events, precepting future generations of nurses, and maintaining relationships with the incredible faculty and staff who nurtured you through your educational journey. As you move forward in your professional lives, I hope that you will do so as a proud alum of this distinguished university. Congratulations. May you remember the year of the nurse 2020 and 2021, not as a COVID curse, but as praise to your Doosan strong experience. I now invite Dr. Broom back to the podium.
Congratulations to each of you. And on behalf of all of us in the Duke University School of Nursing, I extend my sincere best wishes for a future of success. Of that, I have no doubt for each and every one of you. I also want to extend our special thanks to harpist Laura Byrne for outstanding, calming music during the ceremony. And now I'd like to just take a few minutes, if you'll bear with me. Um, this is my last re, uh, graduation in 17 years as a dean. Um, so I'm not even gonna tell you how many numbers that the faculty of two fine schools and I finished up. Um, but it was a lot, for sure. Um, but this is one's extraordinary. Woo, what a year. And you know, I looked at my remarks that I've tweaked over the years, but they just didn't fit. And they were good, and I'll selectively pick a few of them, but they just weren't good enough. So I spent some time reflecting on what we've all been through and what I've been through. And I've grown a lot this year. I know each of you have, ABSN, masters, DNP, PhD students. There's no growth like that. It, it's amazing how much you can learn in even what seemed like a long years, it, it's not. But I found out when I looked at what I missed the most, I thought of the long hours of pre-COVID, but then I realized I had longer hours since COVID in this job. I thought about the travel, which I used to not be so thrilled about, and now I realized how I actually found a lot of um, respite in travel, meeting with colleagues nationally, and having time on a plane to do something for like three or four hours, get something done. So the travel was gone, some good, some bad. I missed people, and I don't think I'm different from anyone else. Very early, I had enough sense to put our grown children and grandchildren who live in Atlanta in our bubble. I couldn't have lived through this any other way. And, but I miss so my colleagues. I missed so the faith. I didn't realize how much. I am not an extrovert, but I did not realize. I knew that part. But I didn't realize how much this face-to-face -face meant to me. And it meant to me a lot because you learn things about people that you just don't learn on Zoom because there's 40 other people on Zoom with you, right? Even if you come in a little early, it doesn't work. I miss the students. I missed the, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I truly missed the orientations and some of the lectures I actually gave in the ABSN and some of the other courses. And I missed my students in the DMP and the PhD programs. Um, the DNP during intensives, we, it's, it, I just really miss seeing people face to face. I'm sure everyone realizes that if you didn't then, people are it. That's the most important thing. But we're all nurses, right? I think sometimes that sort of gets lost even for us. And I also have to say, my husband and I had season basketball tickets here. Right up there, I dearly miss those games. Probably, poor, poor husband, it's the only time he saw me was when we came to games. And, um, and we, were, we loved it, it was awesome. Um, and why did I miss people? I miss people because they always have better ideas that they share and, they're, and by the final outcome, it's always much stronger than anything I ever thought of. And I learn things from people. I learn things personally, professionally about them that I, if, you did, if I just took time to listen, I would learn about them. And as I aged, I learned to do that. I learned to get past degrees. I learned to get past, not just this past year, well before this, I learned to get past everything and just really get to the person. And that has been a joy for me um, over the years. And I also this year saw life and people in the full dimensions and life and myself in the full dimensions, the good, the sad and the glorious and the not so great. But that's human nature, right? That is human, that's who we are. 
Like all of you, I had really bad days, hit the wall and had to dig deep. And I happen to have a very strong faith. I used it more this past year than ever in my entire life, I think, before. And get up and just keep going. Why? I'll tell you why. Every single person sitting in this room, this is my job. I can't tell you how many days I just woke up and said, look, you got a job. That's it. I don't care. I honestly don't care how you feel this morning. You have a job to do. And it, it really helped. Thinking of the students we had to graduate, and we did. Thinking of how many of you, especially the ABS 10 and the masters, went in, and our faculty went into that CND and kept putting one foot in front of the other when we wanted to do something else. You, you all amazed me. It, it, was, um, it, it was probably the best year in some ways of my career because I saw what perseverance and goals and dedication and commitment of faculty to their students. I saw what that looks like. I've seen it before, but it made a different indelible impression on me. And there were some good days when we had our holiday party and we all laughed so much. I don't think we ever laughed that much. This was on Zoom, believe it or not. But we laughed. It was fun. Um, and we had our celebrations of our students. We had our celebrations of our faculty and their awards. Those, those were the good. They felt good and it was good to share with others. And every one of us did something to make ourselves more resilient. Now, I know all the, I, I'm at my PhDs in child development, I understand all the literature and the evidence on resilience. Are you born with it? Do you develop it? All this stuff. Scholars debate all of that. Well, scholars can debate it. But I think what everyone agrees on is that you only build resilience through adverse experiences. It just isn't handed to anybody. Some of those, some people have more adverse experiences. We know that now. Whether we really know that from looking at somebody, I'd argue not. We have to listen to people. What have they been through in life? What do they go through in life every single day? But that resilience gets built by those who are surrounded by them, that they reach out to, just like you have this year, reached out to others who cared about you and you cared about them. Going forward, it will be behoove each of us to look for the positive responses we had to this year and all the disappointments we had and all, I mean, I don't know about you, but I kept thinking every three months this thing was going to be over. That, I, I think maybe that was a good thing, right? Maybe that kept getting me up. <laughs> um, but we all, everyone in here, developed strengths that you didn't know you had. And you learned some things about yourself and others that you didn't know were there. And w some of us had failures along the way. I certainly did. Missteps, failures. The important thing is I learned from them. And you did too. In fact, you often, people would argue, you learn more from your failures than you do your successes. But here's the thing. Here's the why. There's two whys to this. The why for me was that there was something way beyond me that kept me going this year. And it was all of you, the faculty, the staff, the students. You each had your own why for other people. But for those of you who are finishing a degree program, there's another why about this year that I think is important. You had to come out of this year a better person, a more compassionate person, a clearer-minded person, and one who could prioritize and focus on the important things while still reaching out to others. And I think that will make you a, much, a person that's much better able to understand human beings as you work, as nurses, at the bedside and in the communities as a direct caregiver, as a nurse educator with students, as a nurse scientist with participants in your research, and as nurse practitioners working in a variety of roles, caring and improving health. You will realize that people are vulnerable because you have been there. You have been there. It's easy to overlook that. And you, the, none of us will ever forget this year and forget how vulnerable we, we were. Being just a nurse, and there's actually a book called that, if 
by the way, by Mary Katoinas from, I don't know, the 90s, is no longer on the minds or lips of anybody I know. They couldn't have lived through last year and watched that TV in March and April. They just could not have of last year. Being a nurse is still certainly a sacred trust that we hold with our public. We've known that for 20 years. But now they've seen us in addition to trusting us at our best. They know how smart we are. They know how capable we are. They know how caring we are and innovative and most importantly, courageous. Nurses do what it takes to get the job done, regardless of their role. That's what we do. And we did it this year. So as Duke nurses, you're going to be looked, every single one of you are going to be looked to, to be leaders in a very dynamic society and a very dynamic profession. I think every one of you, because of your experience here, is ready for this role. You can do it, and more than that, you'll make us proud. You'll make yourself proud. So just a few final thoughts. Maintain your idealism. That is really tough in today's society. We are going through cataclysmic change, and some that is so overdue. We have all dealt with, as Dr. Bishop said, multiple crises, and the racial justice crisis is something that our school has taken deeply to heart and has made magnificent. Uh, our faculty, student, and staff have really just laid a path for the future that is, is just exactly where we need to be to call ourselves nurses and those who support nurses. So maintain that idealism and caring that made you choose to become a nurse in the first place, even if it's three degrees ago. That's what will continue to feed your mind and soul. And be true to the special relationships that nurses have with their patients and their participants in their research or the nurses that they are leading in health systems. We have so many different roles. You'll bear witness to birth, struggles with illness and death, of your colleagues, of your patients. May the heroism and grace, though, of those individuals and their families continue to fill you with wonder and enhance your own growth and development as a person and as a nurse. See life's challenges, and there will be many. This is my 48th year as a nurse, and there have been. No matter what people think, I have not had an easy ride this whole time. And there will be many challenges for all of us. And how, it's how you respond to those and how you most importantly grow that will, that will really make a difference. Enjoy the support of other nurses. They are, they are I, I, I just find my nurse friends, colleagues of many, many years are the people that I reached out to this year as I'm sure you did. And most importantly, be committed to the next generation of students. If they're PhD students, DMP students, MSN or ABSN or BSN, make sure when you're asked to be a preceptor or a mentor or an advisor, please remember all those who did that for you and how you would not be here without those that saw something in you and invested in you and thought, we're going to do this. I'm, I want to help you do this because I'm going to have fun helping you do this. Try to keep that. I know, it's, I know it's a lot of work to be a mentor and a preceptor, but it will, again, feed your soul. Stay connected with us. We are very proud of what you do after you leave us, and we would love to know that. And we would, more importantly, we would love to share that with future students so they can see how well you have done. In any, it doesn't have to be, you know, publications and all that. Just tell us what you're doing. Show us the full dimension of who you are as a leader, and we will make sure that we celebrate that with you. As you begin your practice as a professional nurse, nurse scientist, nurse educator, nurse practitioner, you will join, I know I've left somebody out, uh, I'm sorry, you will join more than 7,000 graduates of Duke University School of Nursing. Wow. Today's a milestone in your life. The closing, I hope, 
of one chapter, one year, and the opening of many, many more. We cast our fate with you as you continue your career, and we so appreciate you casting yours with us. We are privileged as educators to be a part of your journeys. And I have all the faith that you will represent us well. So once again, on behalf of the Duke faculty, let's congratulate all the Duke graduates. <clears throat> and one last thing I'd like to ask you to do, because your families and friends <clears throat> are probably watching this on live stream, I'd like the, all the graduates to stand and give your families and your support folks a real round of applause. They helped you get through this. <clears throat> And now we'll close, and I just want to say the last seven years has been an honor for me. It's been an incredible capstone to my career, and to work with the faculty and staff at Duke University School of Nursing <clears throat> is a privilege. And to see so many people in one building be so committed to students is, um, I, I just think, remarkable. And so, um, There'll be many deans to come after me. Dr. Ramos will be um, here July 1st. He will do a, a phenomenal job as well. And <clears throat> who knows, we might have another alum. <clears throat> We've had two now as deans, or we'll have one of you in this audience may be a dean of the Duke University School of Nursing in the future. And so I wish you a wonderful profession. It's the best profession you could have ever chosen, without a doubt. Thank you. processional. <laughs>